and welcome. It is day 15 of the four week challenge. Today we have our third flow fusion class. Uh, so this is more less about the like traditional yoga class and more about just finding the flow in our movement, opening up our joints, celebrating our bodies and everything that we can do or try to do on the mat. We will be taking our Fusion Flow 1 and 2 class and adding on to that. If you haven't done Fusion Flow class 1 or 2, that's okay. You can try this one out or check out the class links in the description so you can do a little catch up there. You can get the foundations there and then move into this class. Today, you will need a mat or something to lay down on. Also, if you have something that'll give you a little bit of assistance, uh, like a water bottle, if you have a yoga block, great. Otherwise, grabbing just something that is solid that you can use uh, to give yourself a little balance stability. We'll basically be using it as like a kickstand. I'll be using the yoga block as a bolster as well. So if you have a towel or a pillow to help lift your seat up for some of these stretches, that may be a good thing for you to grab as well. Please modify whenever you need to, take breaks whenever you need to. We're going to be getting into some pretty tricky positions. So if you're new at this, again, check out the first or second Fusion Flow classes and or try them out, do them. You can alter them. You can take those rests whenever you need to. Take care of your bodies, listen to them. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go. Start by sitting down on your mat, whatever comfortable seat position you like. Hands gently placed onto the knees, inhale, lengthen the spine, sit as tall as you can. Shoulders come up to the ears, roll back and soften down. Start with our neck rolls, drop the chin towards the chest and roll the head around. We start this way in our yoga, in our fusion flow classes just to center the mind and wake up the body. So whether you're doing this first thing in the morning or after work or late at night, just tune in to where you are physically, mentally, emotionally. Hold the head over to one side, reach the opposite hand, give yourself that twist through the shoulder. Option to take this hand and gently place it on top of the head. Not pulling, just let the weight Guide the neck a little bit longer. Hands back onto the knees, chin to the chest, and circle the other direction. Lifting in the back. So you're not crunching the spine, reaching long in the back. And reaching long in the front as well. So don't just collapse the chin to the chest, lengthen it. Almost like a turtle coming out of a turtle shell. Reach that head long. Over to the other side, extend the arm, twist, hand comes up, gently places. And since we've been doing these movements consistently in our fusion flow class, notice if they feel any different. Notice if anything feels crunchier or looser and just noticing. Hands go back to the knees, chin to the chest, roll the shoulders up, back and down. Do this a few times. Into those shoulder joints and connecting with the breath, breathing. Deep inhale, exhale. Head comes all the way up. Yeah. Take one arm up, lengthen up and over. Hand can come down. Give yourself a gentle side bend. Up, switch it over to the other side. Waking up the body. Even if we had run a marathon before this. Well, that, that'd be a lot, so <laughs> we would want to stretch after that. But even if we had warmed up by doing some cardio before this, we still want to lengthen everything out, warm everything up, wake everything up, and tap into our alignment. Switch your legs if you're cross-legged, so the other leg is in front now. Hands onto the knees and rotate the chest around. Getting into any sticky spots, noticing anything feels a little off kilter today circle other direction trying again to find that flow through it we've been talking about grace as well in these classes giving yourself some grace 
some kindness as we just work through these things. Circle other direction. No right or wrong necessarily, as long as you're not pushing yourself to injury. So waking ourselves up, connecting to our bodies, building that friendlier relationship to our bodies, to ourselves. Take one arm up, side bend again, stretch over, gotta be fair. Do it with the legs crossed the other way. All right, add a little twist to this. Take one foot, cross it over the opposite knee. Inhale, lengthen, draw that knee in, sit up tall, sit bones down to the ground and then twist towards that knee. You can have this hand grab on, it can go to the other side. You can hook an elbow, other hand reaches back behind you. Inhale up, exhale, twist a little bit deeper. Maybe gain a little adjustment, some pops or cracks may come out and that's okay. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist a little bit deeper, even if it's only in your mind. Come back forward, give a little shake out, switch the legs. Other leg on top, hug this knee in, sit up tall, round under the sit bones. Now this, I already feel a stretch in my hips, so maybe this is as far as you go. If it feels good and accessible, you can start to rotate, keep both hips down onto the ground. If that feels good, you can hook the elbow, Reach the opposite hand behind. Inhale up. Exhale, twist deeper. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Pull the chest forward. Exhale, spiral a little bit further. Even if it's just with your head or with your eyeballs. One more time. Inhale, reach crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Come back to the center. That 90-90 degree with our hips and our legs. 90-90. Aiming for 90-90 degrees. Maybe yours is a little bit different. That's okay. Hands come back. Keep the feet down and bring it over to the other side. Again, this may not be accessible to you. Maybe you got to bring the legs out a little bit further. Maybe your angles are a little bit bigger. You just find what works for you. I'm trying to move in through that hip joint working the 360 of the hip joint. And we've been doing this the past couple of weeks. Can we now try doing it without hands? Oh, so that's more core. <laughs> Having to keep yourself upright, you can't lean back as far. It gives you less space to work into. Absolutely, answer can be no. I cannot do it without my hands. I gotta keep my hands back. That is great, keep them back. Add a little forward fold to this. Forward fold over the leg, come up, switch over to the other side. Forward fold over. How much flow, how much grace can we have? And grace being both physical, aesthetically, and mentally, emotionally. When we don't look so graceful, can we still give ourselves grace on the inside? And be like, that's okay, it's all right. I'm still doing it, I'm still here. That's what matters. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm working, right? We're working, we're trying. It's the effort we put in, not necessarily what it looks like. Last one. Yes, bring it back center, extend one leg out. Then the other knee is going to bend in. Try and grab that heel, bring it towards your glute. This does not feel accessible again. You may want to grab that bolster, that pillow. Just lift your hips up. It'll give you some extra space. Push that knee back. We're going to try and press this hip forward. Feel a big stretch in the hip flexor. At least I do. You don't need to have that bolster. You can take it out. Inhale up, exhale, reach your heart to this leg. So pressing the hip forward and down, and getting into those hips. Give yourself a little sway. Be gentle with all of this movement. We're not just forcing, we're encouraging. And mostly, again, trying to move the blood, move the energy around. 
drain it. Open your chest, give yourself a side bend. Elbow comes to the inside of that opposite leg. If you can, reach up and over. All of these positions are gonna look a little bit different depending on your body. So focus on how it feels. Can you find the openness? Where can you find the expansion? You bring it up, sit yourself back, give a little shake out, switch over to the other side. Tuck one foot in, other leg goes out. And notice, oh, is this hip a little bit tighter? How does this hip feel compared to the other side? This hip is tighter for me, I don't know about you. Press that hip forward, lift up, take that bolster, put it underneath your cheek if you need to. Lay yourself forward over the front leg. Yourself that gentle sway. I kind of feel like if our hips are, are locked up, it's like a, like a bolt in a, in a rusty uh, hole. You want to kind of like, we're kind of massaging into it, right? We're kind of doing that like back and forth, back and forth to loosen it up, opposed to just forcing it open. You kind of sort of lubricate it. You put some, some good oils in there and lubricate it so it gently comes undone. Bring it up, turn yourself open towards the front, elbow down, other hand up, stretch up and over. Spiral the heart up towards the ceiling, lengthen, so driving this hip down and the other arm overhead. Our hips hold a lot of power, a lot of emotion. Gotta take care of them, pay a little attention or a lot of attention to their health and their wellness. Come up into your quadruped position, hands and knees, get there however you can. <laughs> Working through cat cow, round the spine, and like an angry cat, pushing the belly button up towards the ceiling, trying to expand the gaps in between each vertebra. Then lengthen out long, draw the belly button in. There's a fire underneath your core. You're trying to still lift the belly button off of the fire. But lengthen your tailbone, lengthen your heart. Tuck the tail in between your legs, curl, expand through your back body, lengthen, expand through your front body, but keep the core engaged. One more. Exhale into your cat, inhale into your cow, tuck the toes under, float the knees, do three cat cows with those knees hovering, press into the mat. It's a lot harder once we hover the knees. Try and keep the knees low to the ground, just about an inch or two off the floor. Push into your shoulders, and you gotta keep your core stable and engaged in order to hold this position. Good, bring it down, bird dog. Opposite arm, opposite hand reaches. Hold, come back down. Again, other side, alternate. Lengthen out and try to get a flat back. So I, if someone put a ball on my back, I'm trying to get it so it's so flat it wouldn't roll off of my back. Keep switching. Do a pause at the top though. I see people, and I'm guilty of this too, they just move through these. Just kind of reach out and come right back in. It's about finding that stability, finding that balance. So in this challenging position, can we hang here for a second and still find the balance? And again, all these things are kind of metaphors for life too, right? In those challenging positions, those challenging times, can we hang there? Because they usually last a little bit longer or a lot longer than we'd like them to. But can we still find the balance or as much ease and grace as we can when we have to stay in those positions that want to throw us off balance? Good, come and give yourself a little child's pose. Hips back towards the heels, sway yourself side to side. Into our vinyasa flow. We've been doing this, We're gonna move through it. Cobra first, modified I'll show first. Knees down, skim the elbows. By your, uh, by your ribs, lower all the way down onto your belly. Baby cobra or push up into a fuller cobra. It's your first back extension, so don't force it. Keep the shoulders down, bring it all the way down, push yourself back up to a plank, tuck the toes, press back into your down dog. Walk your heels out, push your chest through your arms, breathe into it. 
one more of those vinyasa flows. Do it with the knees up this time into your plank position. Bend the elbows, skim them by your side, keep the belly pulled in, try to lower yourself down one even plank. Baby cobra, full cobra. Inhale up, exhale down. Push back into your down dog. Get there however you can get there. And hold. Take a deep inhale, exhale. Float one foot off of the mat. Step that foot through, come to your plank position, bend the knee, try and step it up and through. Push yourself forward, lift yourself up into your crescent lunge. So this position, hips are square. Pull the belly button in, press on those back toes forward, lift the arms overhead and try and find your balance. Keep bent in this knee, option to always keep that back knee down if you need to. Twist. Reach the same hand as the knee that's front, back behind you. Look behind that shoulder, twisting through the spine. Bring the back hand around. Open up. Pivot the toes of the back foot. And open into your warrior two. So warrior two, the heel of this foot is in line with the arch of the back foot really pushing that outside edge of my foot into the mat. I'm trying to bend as deep as I can into this front leg. Open up, gaze over the front fingers, draw the belly in and opening up those hips. Reverse warrior, reach the front arm up, back hand goes to the back thigh. Just here, just grazing it, not really putting pressure on it. Other hand reaches up and stretch. Come back to your warrior two. Lengthen forward, side angle. Go bring your elbow down first. Arm overhead and stretch. All right. Here's where you may need a water bottle, a yoga block, something like that for assistance. So watch here first. Go ahead and see if you can put this hand down on the ground. Can you bend down lower? Get all the way down. If not, just stay in that uh, position with your elbow on your knee. Then we're going to start to kind of hop this back foot forward, reach this arm out or reach it onto your assistance and try and float up to our half moon. Half moon position, we're bouncing on one leg, trying to open this hip up. So we're stacking the hips, bring this arm overhead, just like you're in between two panes of glass. This is a hard position to hold. This back foot, the toes are pointed forward. So my foot, my toes are pointing towards the camera. Okay, bring both hands down. Keep that leg back behind and reach that back leg up towards the ceiling. Give yourself a stretch standing splits. Keep the hips square for this first round. We can open the hips the next time. Good, step this foot back. That was a lot. Could step back into your plank, vinyasa flow. Elbows bend. Cobra. Down. Downward dog. Next time we do our vinyasa flow, if you want to go into an up dog instead, you can. If you don't know what an up dog is, don't worry. I'll go over that again. Take a moment to breathe here. Float the other foot up. Shift your weight forward. Bend the knee. Step it forward. Push into those back toes, weight comes forward, arms sweep overhead, crescent lunge. Keep the hips square, breathe, hang here. Yes, burning into that front leg. If you need to take a break at any time you can. Add that twist, open yourself up, twist, spiral. Look back behind that shoulder, but still stay bent in the front leg. Back arm sweeps around, open yourself up, pivot those back toes, find your warrior two position. Hips open up, but this knee stays over the second, third toenail of my front toes. Back foot is now spiraled open and perpendicular to my front foot. Into the reverse warrior, lift the arm up, 
lengthen back. Lightly place that hand onto the thigh. Don't put it right on the knee, either above or below the knee. Still bend into the front leg. Bring it back to your warrior two. Reach forward, elbow down, side angle, other arm reaches up. Keep pressing this front knee back behind you. It may want to collapse in. Careful of that. Make sure again, going over the second and third toenail. If you can, take the elbow off, place that hand down onto the ground, keep that overhead stretch. Now this side definitely feels stickier for me. Again, this is my hip that's tighter. So if I needed to, I would go back up onto my thigh instead. Go look down, make sure you have that prop if you need it. Kind of hop yourself fo back foot forward, reach this hand, grab on if you need it, then float yourself up, open the hips. So hips are square here, I'm opening them up. My back toes are pointed sideways, reach the top arm up, keep soft in the standing leg, squeeze the butt. Squeeze the cheek of this leg and kick the heel back a little bit. Well, it's like I'm up against a wall with my body. Top arm goes down. Keep that back leg up. Now square the hips. Kick that back leg up. Feel a stretch in the back of the hamstring. Keep the hips square for this one. Step the toe back. Go into your vinyasa flow. Plank position. Lower down option to go to up dog. Up dog, there's a gap between your knees, your thighs, your hips. It's kind of hovering off of the mat. Then from here, you can pike the hips up right into your down dog. If you want to go into cobra, go into cobra. Again, you find what flow fits your body, whatever your body needs. Bend the knees, look forward. Step yourself forward. Just give yourself a little walk. Hang out here. Feet about hip width distance apart. Just hang out, give yourself a gentle sway side to side. We'll stand it up, leave that mat sequence for a while. Work on some balance. Halfway lift, lengthen through the tailbone, try and get that flat back. Again, ball on our back. Don't let it roll off. Come all the way down, bend the knees. Now round up. Roll the shoulders up, back, down. Mm, okay, let's go to a little standing work, shall we? Feet together. Inhale, arms overhead. Grab onto one wrist. Stretch up and over. Push your hips in the opposite direction. Big side bend with your body. Lift up, switch over to the other side. Inhale, lift. Exhale, cactus the arms. Adding a new one here, chair position. Bend the knees, sweep the arms overhead. I'll show you what this looks like from the side. From the side, I'm sitting my tailbone back. Reach the arms overhead. Try to get the ears in between the biceps. Not leaning too far forward. Really sit the butt down, pull the belly button in. So the heart is lifted, grounding down through the feet, squeezing the knees together. Stand all the way up. Good. All right, adding on a little eagle to that. Take one foot, cross it over the opposite knee, and then bend it back down again into that chair position. If you can, you can also try hooking that toe around the calf. Like one side always can do it, the other side oh, can't quite do it. Not quite on this side, that's okay. Keep squeezing the inner thighs together, the knees together. Stand it up, take a little shake if you need to. Other foot, crosses over. If you can, hook that toe, <laughs> try and find the balance, or just cross the knees and sit it down. Finding that balance, single leg balance. Draw the inner thighs together. Okay, bring it all the way up. Back to the first foot, tree position. Turn this leg out, pop the toes, and try to inch that foot up the leg. Grab on if you need. Place it above or below the knee. Reach up, squeeze the butt, and push your heel down in that standing leg. 
Knee comes forward, grab onto the knee, lift it up, opposite hand. Can reach down, grab onto the ankle, grab onto the shin, grab onto the toes, and extend. If you wanna add that twist, this is a real balance challenge. Whenever we change where we're looking, it's gonna challenge our stability even more. Bring it back forward, Ooh. and bend this knee in. Same hand as foot, grabs on, bring it to the side. If you want to extend up, you can grab onto the ankle, to the foot, wherever, and extend. These are all options. We've been building up to these positions over the past couple weeks. Again, you go where you need to go. Does not mean you have to be here in just two weeks. The hand into your quad stretch. I'll turn side just so you can see this into your dancer stretch. Push the foot, Ooh, if I can find my balance, push the foot into the hand, press. Push the hip forward, lift the heart. Bring it down with control and whew, do a little roll out in that foot. Right, these positions are difficult. They are hard. Sometimes I can hold them, sometimes I can't. Just depends on the day too. So again, try not to judge whatever's going on, whatever's happening. Just try it out, just see, can we play with this? Can it be playful? There's, you know, you're not getting graded on this. This is just a time to explore, to play, to be free. So you fall over, so you can't get your foot up, whatever happens, it's okay. Maybe you can, and then it's, that's also great. Celebrate that, but they're both even, they're both equal, they're both valuable. Ooh, other side, open that knee up, inch the foot up into your tree position. You can grab on. You can also absolutely do this whole series holding onto a wall, holding onto something. Squeeze the glute of the standing leg, push the heel down, reach up. Just find your fullest expression wherever it is. Bring the knee forward, opposite hand, grabs onto that leg, shin, foot, extends out front. Option to twist. Oh yeah. Plus you're working the muscles in the feet, in the calf, and the ankle. Grip with your toes. Use the muscles in the arch of your foot to help you balance. Bring it back forward, bend the knee. Same hand as leg, brings it out. You can keep the knee bent or extend up. Good. Bend the knee in, go to that quad stretch. Definitely feeling that burn on the calf a lot to be balancing and stabilizing on one leg. I'll turn sideways so you can see the stancer stretch. Kick the foot into the hand, lift up. Other arm reaches forward. You can hinge yourself forward. Keep pressing that back hip front. Good. Bring it down. Ooh, and roll out that ankle. Yeah, I felt that all up in, all up in that calf. <laughs> ah. All right, gang. We know all of the different moves. We're just gonna keep stringing them together and try and flow it out. All right, so bring it to the top of your mat. <sighs> Dive all the way down, arms overhead, get that flat back. Halfway lift, draw the belly in, pull the shoulder blades back behind. Hands down, step, hop, jump into your plank position, vinyasa. Down into that up dog or cobra, back to the down dog, however you can get there. Lift one foot up, bring it forward, step it through, push forward on those back toes, sweep the arms up, crescent lunge. Keep bent in that front knee. Twist it, bring it up around to your warrior two. Adjust your feet however you need to. Just find that positioning of a perpendicular foot and the front facing foot. Reverse warrior, lift up. Keep bending deeper into that front leg. Yes, I know. It's, it's working. Come up, reach forward. Side angle either on your thigh or all the way to the ground. I know we just did that balance section, but we're going into our half moon. 
So reach your arm out, grab on to that assistance if you need to. Try and float that back leg up. Ooh. <laughs> float being relative. Flex the toes, open up the hips, stack yourself against that imaginary wall. Breathe. Good, hands come down. Standing split. Square the hips, no option to open the hips. Do you see that difference? This is square, then this is open. And then lift that leg up a little bit further if you can. You should be able to lift that leg a little bit higher, maybe a lot higher, maybe just a millimeter. Step that leg back, plant the feet into your vinyasa. Down, reach up through the heart. Now, instead of doing a vinyasa, you can just push back to down dog. You can go to a child's pose, anything like that. Other side, lift the foot up, bring it forward into your crescent lunge, push forward on the toes, sweep the arms up, keep the front leg bent. Spiral twist. Bring that back arm around, open up to your warrior two, adjust your feet however you need to, keep bent in that front leg. Reverse warrior, reach up, lengthen through the side body. Side angle, reach forward, down onto your thigh or all the way down onto the mat, reach the other arm overhead. Find that assistance if you need it, float yourself up into your half moon. Try and stack the hips. Maybe take the gaze up towards the ceiling. Squeeze the butt, kick that heel back behind you of the leg that's up. Hands down, square the hips, then open the hips up and lift that toe up higher, standing split. Really straighten that top leg as much as you can. Step the foot back into your vinyasa flow. Lower down, reach up, press back. We'll all meet in down dog, take a breath. Breathe, press the chest back. Let go, whatever just happened, let it go. Doesn't matter, we're moving on. <laughs> so whether it, was, wh whether it was what you wanted it to be or what you didn't want it to be, just try and let that go. Let the judgments roll off. Bend the knees, step, jump, hop yourself up forward, forward fold, halfway lift, lengthen through the spine. Forward fold, bend the knees, round yourself all the way up. Short little balance section. I'll step forward just so you can see into your chair position. Sweep the arms overhead, squeeze the knees together. Come up into your uh, tree position. One foot, I can also move this one foot, squeeze through that glute. Bring the knee forward, cross it over so that into your eagle position. Bend down, sweep the arms up. Bring it up, bring the knee up, grab onto that foot, extend it forward. Option to add that twist. That's all we're doing this time. Bring it all the way down, back to chair or shake it out. Bring it up, tree on the other side. Ground down through that foot. Pull the muscles of the arch up on the standing leg. Squeeze into the butt. Take the knee forward, cross it over, sit it into your eagle position. Stand it up, lift the knee up. Try and grab on with the opposite hand. Extend forward. Option to add that twist. You do not have to. Those legs are tired by now. Ooh. Bring it forward, Ooh, bend it down, Ah, lift it all the way up, grab onto one wrist, inhale, exhale, side bend. Inhale, lift, exhale, side bend. Inhale, lift, exhale, catch the arms. Reach through the heart. Do that again, inhale, lift. Connect to the breath, exhale, side bend, reach long. Inhale, lift. Exhale, reach long. Inhale. Exhale, cactus the arms, open up through the heart. 
Inhale, step to the top of your mat. If you're not there already, exhale, dive down. Halfway lift, lengthen the back. Exhale down. Jump, hop, step into plank. Go into your vinyasa flow. We'll all meet in down dog. Breathe. All right, movers. One more time through our sequence, all right? Let go of any expectations. Just see what happens. Play with it. Be proud for showing up on your mat. We're just gonna have some fun with it. Let's try it out. Let's just see what happens, shall we? Lift one leg up. Step it through to your crescent lunge. Exhale, twist. Inhale, bring it up to the warrior two. Lengthen back, reverse. Inhale. Bring it into a side angle. Push back into that knee. Into your half moon. Float the leg up. Push the top leg back behind you. Squeeze the butt. Hands down into standing split. Open the hips up. Reach that toe up as high as you can. Step the foot back. Vinyasa flow. Bring it down. Or just go to your down dog. Or child's pose or whatever. All right, one last side movers. We got this. Take a deep inhale, exhale. It's a lot of choreography strung together as well. So if you're feeling lost, that's okay. Cut out some parts. Do whatever you need to do again. As long as you feel that energy moving in your body, you're doing great. Leg lifts up. Step it through to crescent lunge. Sweep it up. Add that twist. Right, this movement is not about nailing it up to second or warrior two. It's about moving the body and connecting to ourselves, reverse. So if you feel that energy, that heat building, maybe a little sweat happening, side angle, then you're being successful. If you're challenging yourself, if you're allowing yourself to be challenged, that's also successful in my book. Up to half moon. If you're falling over, that's also success. You're building, you're growing, you're challenging yourself. Hands down, standing split. Open up the hip, reach up the toe. That growth mindset, right? Growth versus fixed mindset. The only way we can grow is by challenging, doing something hard and failing. Step back. Last time, vinyasa flow. Take a breath here. Bend the knees, look forward, hop, jump. Step yourself forward, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, release down. Bend the knees, round yourself all the way up. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. Ooh. And just ground yourself down in your feet. Step out wide, add with a little, our little Qigong energy. Hands are in fists. Use the momentum to let them swing side to side. Let the fists knock on your body. Again, it's about moving the energy around trying to align, trying to release whatever we can release and dig into the spots that maybe need a little more attention, whatever that means to you. Good, let it settle, just kind of bring it down a little bit more. Adding a little bit of the shake the tree, you can just do little bounces, maybe close your eyes and feel what it feels like. Just move the body around and bounce through it. How's your energy feel? How's your body feel? Yeah, this can feel kind of fun and silly too. That's all right, let it feel fun and silly. Then settle that down. Just find your alignment. 
connect with that inhale, lengthen to the crown of the head. Exhale, corset everything in, draw the belly button down. Two more deep breaths. Inhale, expand through the lungs. Exhale. One more, inhale. You should be able to hear yourself breathe. You're doing it so big. Exhale. Blink the eyes open. Take your hands, fluff our aura, rub them together. Gratitude, thanks, intention, appreciation, all in our hands right here. Give a little shake out. Cross it up top, in the middle, down low. Lift the energy up. Let it pour down on you. Ah, yeah, way to go, movers. That is it for your third Fusion Flow class of this four-week challenge. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, you can sign up at patreon.com slash movewithmidnight. Our Patreon members, thank you so much for your support. They get extra perks and bonus videos, but also your donations help make this channel run and help us to create more content in the future. For those of you doing the full four-week challenge program, this week we will be focusing on stress. And I have a link to a podcast. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can. It's kind of long, but it's super interesting. If you don't want to listen to the podcast, totally fine. We're going to be talking about micro and macro stressors. So macro stressors are the things we think about when we think of stress. They're the big things like, uh, like job, like money, finances, like any health issues that you may have, moving, uh, parenting. All of those things are macro stressors, but there are also micro stressors that happen to us every day. Your alarm clock when you wake up, uh, someone cutting you off in traffic, uh, you having to run because you see the bus about to leave and you're trying to run to get it. Kids screaming or hearing a siren, anything that alerts us, they trigger, they activate our sympathetic nervous system, those add up, they compile. And so those are also important that we don't think about every day, but they do affect us and they affect our body. So your journal prompt today is to write about what are the biggest macro stressors in your life right now, but also what are the biggest micro stressors? What are your regular, consistent, everyday micro stressors? Check out the rest of our website, check out our YouTube channel for other classes. We hope to move with you again. Thank you so much for joining, for moving, for flowing with us. And yeah, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye.